a major hit to the porn industry in Canada this week as three of the largest credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, and Discover, announced that they would not process payments made through Pornhub, a Canadian-owned company with one of the largest pornography websites in the world and over 120 million viewers per day. Some say this decision came in light of pressure from anti-trafficking lobbyists who have accused Pornhub of housing millions of videos featuring trafficked underage victims, rape, and child sexual abuse. The pornography giant's response only after pressure and investigation by the credit card companies, the commitment to remove millions of those videos immediately. Is it enough? I'm joined by Joy Smith, former member of parliament and founder of the Joy Smith Foundation. Thanks for joining us today, Joy. My pleasure to be here, Maggie. So, you know, as I said, we've heard loud and clear from MasterCard, Visa and Discover and the subsequent response from Pornhub itself. Is this a step in the right direction? It absolutely is a step in the right direction. You know, finally, people are starting to talk about it. You know, we're talking about child sex slavery. We're talking about underage children being lured over the internet by Pornhub. We're talking about violent visuals against children. And when you see all the viewers that, that view this stuff, it's appalling. And we need to send a strong message out there that our children are not for sale and they're not to be violated. You know, it takes a nation to stop this horrible thing. And I was one of them that were joining in getting the, the credit card companies to stop this. It's, it's very important. That's one small step mm. and a good one. Yeah. You know, as you talk about just these horrific um, videos that have been circulating around the world, I know that you have um, intimately and personally spoken to some survivors of human trafficking. What are the stories that you hear as you talk to these boys, girls, men, women who have survived this industry, this horrific industry? You know, it's very sad because they are forever changed. Yeah. And we're trying to prevent it from happening now through the foundation by educating people about how the predators work. And that includes online predators. And I think that our youth are very smart and have to be not fearful of the internet, but cautious with the internet because the predators always come on as their friends. They hook them up by, you know, if they're interested in sports, they'll start the conversation about sports. It's very innocent in the beginning, but it doesn't land up that way at all. And once they've got them, and get the trust of the kids, then the kids are separated from all their support systems. So the traffickers have them there. And the videographers who video this kind of stuff have them, they are being trafficked. And it's like modern day slave trade. So, you know, Maggie, I really believe that every mom and dad, mm -hmm. every grandfather and mother, and every teacher needs to be aware of what human trafficking is because I've heard and have worked with over 5,000 files of families whose children have been trafficked. And I know individuals who were on Pornhub and have, are trying to recover. But I have to tell you that to prevent it is the greatest thing. So one of the greatest aspects of this happening is it's brought the issue up to the forefront. Before, a lot of people, Maggie, didn't know about Pornhub. They didn't know that we have, you know, in Montreal, this uh, pornography is, is the biggest center in the world. And that's not what Canada stands for, not by a long shot. Yeah. You have uh, been fighting human trafficking for many years, making Canadian history as the first sitting MP to amend the criminal code twice, passing Bill 268, mandatory minimum sentencing for trafficking of children 18 years and younger, and of course, Bill uh, C310. What are your thoughts about, um, again, the news of Pornhub, but finally being held accountable? The fact that these images are finally coming down. 
What are your thoughts about that specifically? That sends a huge signal out to the traffickers that they're not going to be getting off scot-free. Okay. And it sends a huge message out to them that their money is going down the drain. They can't make money in this way. It takes a nation to stop this. The more we can take down, the more we can talk about it, and the more we can work together collaboratively. You know, you talked about my bills. Yes, I passed mm -hmm. those bills, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really, it, it was God who allowed me to do that. I work very hard. I work very hard every day. I work very hard in my foundation for no, no financial remuneration because it's a calling on your life. And you know, Maggie, it's a calling on all our lives to protect our children because after it happens, it's really hard to bring them back. And for such a time as this, God is calling on so many people, not just me, but so many people across our nation to speak out and work together collaboratively to protect our children. So we have to stop this environment of explicit sexual images of children being put on the internet, of this being on our televisions and in our screens. It, it, teaches, it teaches the whole world and it teaches Canadians that this is normal. It's not normal to hurt a child. It's not normal to sexually exploit a child or anybody. So we have to bring the new norm back to Canada. And the new norm is to be respectful of our very vulnerable and protective of our very vulnerable populations. And that goes in many categories, but children is the most vulnerable and it ruins their lives. I, I've said to many people, I think we've lost a decade of our youth, but I'm starting to get more hopeful now when I see you know, this kind of thing happening. I take the money away. They don't like it because they do it for one thing, money. There's a few of them that do it to get their jollies, but the more, majority of them, it's plain money. So they go through all of this business with having kids tortured sexually and their own kids are protected, go to private schools, have beach holidays. But these poor children and their families are forever marked by this. And it's a long road back. Yeah. You know, Joy, as, as a mother of two boys, and as I read, you know, these stories, and I've been covering, you know, human trafficking for many years in my career, I am always struck at the fact exactly what you said, that this has become this disgusting normality in our society. The fact that you and other groups have had to lobby the credit card companies to say, hey, wait a minute, let's stop this. The fact that we're having this conversation, you know, in 2020, 2021 is, is alarming and disturbing. And so I wonder, you know, as, as pornography producers are seeing this, will they just find another outlet if Pornhub is taking these images down? Will they just find another outlet to, to get their videos up? Absolutely, they will. Absolutely, they will. And that's why we have to be vigilant. We have to look for everything. And we have to speak out. You see, before, nobody spoke out. Mm -hmm. I have so many victims who will not speak out today. You know, you've heard about different incidences on the TV of very high-profile people. Yeah. But I know a lot of their victims, but they can't speak out until everything is proven because it might hurt, hurt cases. But you're going to hear more and more about this going on because it's gone on in plain sight um, without anybody recognizing it and speaking out. And the victims are so afraid to speak out because they didn't used to have the support in the court system now they do so you know i think it will bring canada back to a more uh, respectful place in terms of respecting our most vulnerable populations and that is our children our elderly uh, you know our vulnerable populations that can be influenced and children can be influenced yeah 
let's talk about the legalities of this. This is a Canadian company that runs uh, Pornhub and, and being this, you know, blatant outlet of trafficking images, images of children being abused and, and so forth. Is there a way to stop them within Canada? Well, you know, there's the Bill S-203 put, uh, put uh, forth by uh, Senator Julie Meville de Chen, and I don't know if I pronounced her name. I keep calling her Ju uh, Senator Julie. Mm -hmm. We talk uh, from time to time, we talk quite a bit about this, and it's an act to restrict young persons' online access to sexually explicit material. And this is all interwoven with, uh, you know, the normality of someone coming to a youth and, and actually saying they're already conditioned before they get to them, you know, say, oh, it's okay just to be on this video. And when they get into it, it's just a horrendous, torturous, horrid experience. So, you know, bills like this coming through, I highly applaud. And people speaking out about this issue of Pornhub, I highly applaud. You know, we've had the center of, of pornography in Montreal forever, and nobody spoke out about it until I first started doing the bills. And, and then people started picking up on it. And I know uh, MP Arnold Viersen has done some really good work on, um, on pornography. And people are learning how it changes the brain they're learning how it breaks up families and they're learning how it has that tremendous impact on its victims. So yeah, mm -hmm. you know, all of these bills, it takes a nation and there's so many moving parts to it, but all we have to go back to is no, you cannot buy and sell our youth and you cannot sexually exploit our youth and service providers and everybody else should be held accountable if they allow that to go up on the screen. Our children are not for sale. So what's next in this fight? Can, can it ever be won, Joy? Do you know what? I don't look at it like that. Okay. I look at it as in such a time as this, God has called us to do this. Mm. And when I first started out, everybody said I wouldn't get elected. They said I would never put any bill through. Uh, they had all that noise. But you know what I did? I just relied on my prayer life and relied on what I thought God wanted me to do. And as you go along, things are opened up to you. Like right now, through, the, through my foundation, we're starting the National Human Trafficking Education Center. And we're trying to help NGOs, we're trying to help MPs, we're trying to help everybody. Because it takes a nation, everybody has talent. Everybody has a unique look at this issue. And when you ask that very profound question, Maggie, it is very profound because I think there's millions of people asking, when will this ever end? When will this ever end? If we work together, it's going to end. And it's going to end soon for such a time as this. Oh, thank you so much, Joy Smith, founder of the Joy Smith Foundation, former member of parliament. But thank you, Joy, for not letting go, you know, not continuing the fight against human trafficking. Uh, what you're doing is so important. And thank you again. My pleasure.